Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the Regenerati News Hour. I'm Dave Fortson, your co-host. Uh, Gregory's uh, joining. Will be joining here in just a second. Um, we are gonna get started here in just a minute. Um, I just want to make a few announcements, and then we're going to have Max from the Tokenomics Working Group, who's going to be uh, hopping on stage with us to give a Tokenomics Working Group update on the first si or front side here. Uh, Brian Weinberg is going to come and talk about. Uh, bioregional eco crediting in the Kansas City area. And then we've got Austin and the Regen Foundation team talking about the latest uh, updates uh, in the CS Dow cohort number two. So lots of, uh, going to be a very full uh, uh, RNH. So thanks for, again for joining us. Gregory will be joining me in just a sec. Um, I do want to flag um, we are going to be, we as a Regen, going to be out in uh, COP28 in Dubai. Um, and doing a presentation on December 6th in Hope House. Uh, it's a pretty big cop. Uh, obviously, really, they're all big cops at this point. Uh, but wanted to flag that for those who uh, are going uh, to COP28 this year, or if you have colleagues, uh, we have a, a free event that's put on by, by BXC, Blockchain Times Climate. Uh, so uh, please put that on your calendars. It's going to be a big uh, cop going from, I think, for almost a week and a half. Uh, but we'll be landing on December 6th. So uh, put that in your calendars. Uh, so that's coming up. And then we have a number of um, items that are uh, running through governance. Uh, uh, most of them are still in Commonwealth, um, but uh, and they're just a, really a suite of projects that we'll touch on, hopefully. But I want to encourage you to dip into the Commonwealth, uh, talk about there's uh, tokenomics discussions, there's Cosmwasm discussions, uh, V.50 upgrade discussions. Uh, and also, I think um, I'll have to check, but we might be have passed open crediting as of this morning. So anyhow, I will uh, pull some, pull uh, up mint scan and kind of see where that vote landed. Uh, so exciting uh, movements uh, are taking place as we speak. Um, so uh, inviting Gregory up to come speak. But Max, uh, welcome. Thank you. I know you've only got a bit of time and you're up very late uh, in your hour. So thank you for joining us um, for this morning. We would love a, a general update on what's moving on the tokenomics uh, working group. I know you've uh, your uh, the community uh, that in your stewardship of that have been working quite hard um, and making a, a number of developments. But uh, the floor is yours. Please uh, share an update as you see fit. Hey, thanks so much and uh, greetings, everybody. Uh, so yeah, regarding our tokenomics working group, uh, since uh, the October, we started the synchronization calls weekly. Uh, it's on the calendar, so you can check uh, what time is in your zone. Uh, but we already got like six calls and uh, there are around 35 people who were in general registered for this group. We have around eight to 10 people usually per call. Uh, we have extensive notes, uh, so it would be easier for you to track it. And uh, current discussions uh, include, like, two hottest topics are uh, the um, decreasing the validators' uh, fee sales pressure on the token. Uh, so we're thinking, like, again, there is no, like, there would be some proposal coming to on-chain voting soon and so on. But in general, we're seeking the ways how to decrease the inflation and uh, its pressure on the token. Uh, there was some research done, for example, by Sarah uh, with proof of regeneration, validators basis, and uh, there are more ideas how we can work with uh, the validator set, uh, but the intention is clear. And the second one, is in connection to the uh, token demand. Uh, and uh, it includes burning uh, some number of tokens uh, within the service provided, like services like Marketplace or uh, Registry and so on. Uh, this is still, again, being explored in terms of what it can be and uh, how it might influence the token. But there are uh, already posts from Aaron and Ryan on the Commonwealth about that. Also, in the meantime, I'm doing uh, research on the current state of uh, region tokenomics, which uh, will be will result in a number of uh, articles uh, about the different aspects of the echo. It's mostly interested in the state of things as is, but it will probably help us to uh, develop uh, more solutions uh, uh, for the next year. And we have uh, 
like I can share it maybe somewhere or maybe in the notes to this uh, tweet or something. We have Region Tokenomics Hub that collects all of that information together and uh, you can come up there to um, check out everything that's going. Um, also, just to mention two recent developments, uh, things we discussed was also uh, the road to one dollar. You know what? Uh, uh, this is a conceptual idea about, or a set of ideas how how we can come to the those price of the token, and the tokenomics paper 2.0 was also mentioned. But uh, probably you will hear more about uh, those developments in the next uh, updates. Thanks. Great. Any questions for Max? Uh, Gregory, you want to pick that up? Um, or if any community members want to uh, pepper Max, we've got him for a few more minutes. Awesome. Um, yeah, definitely. If, if folks um, have questions or ideas, I, I see several folks who are in the, the token economics working group. So feel free to uh, raise your hand or hop in. Um, yeah, it's been really helpful and enlivening. I'm super grateful for Max for kind of helping us manage the complexity and create a process around it. And it's, yeah, it's just been really great. You know, I, I kind of continue to say, I think there's some really clear, easy pieces. Um, and then there's a bigger, complex, exciting blue sky reinvention <laughs> process. And it, it, and I think we're, you know, proving capable of kind of holding both of those at the same time. So it's, it's been it's been fun, um, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, and, and feel free to raise your hand if you would like to be invited to speak. Um, uh, Max, will you just as while we're waiting here, will you remind us again the kind of meeting cadence and location of uh, the Tokenomics Working Group? Um, how people can engage, uh, and I'm happy to put the Telegram channel in um, uh, lifts that as well. Yeah, sure. So first of all, like the calls happen every Tuesday. Um, I guess it's currently uh, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, like uh, on the East Coast and quite early, like currently 7 a.m. on the West Coast, but we're thinking maybe moving it a bit later. Uh, again, it really depends on your time zone where you are. Like, uh, uh, So uh, check out uh, there is uh, this region uh, network calendar for because we can also maybe move it uh, soon a, a, a bit later for convenience and uh, there is uh, the commonwealth discussion that outlines the plan for this group and everything and there is the registration link so i would suggest you to uh, like uh, sign up by this link which includes your um, you know telegram email and uh, um, a bit about your information, like information about you. Uh, so it would uh, be easier for the group to engage with you. And uh, then you would also receive a personal invite to your mail for the, um, um, for the calls and the telegram group. Great. And I know, uh, Brian, I've invited you up to speak, Brian Weinberg. Uh, you're going to be touching on bioregional eco-crediting, but also want to encourage you to, um, uh, share out. I know you've drafted uh, the road uh, road to a dollar. Um, so anyhow, if you uh, can accept that speaking request, so we can pull you up. Um, I'd love to maybe have you touch on uh, that draft, uh, your draft paper, uh, and then we can start to pivot over into the bioregional eco crediting. So uh, Brian, um, you're on mute, but if you want to share a little bit more about your road to a dollar document, um, that would be amazing. Absolutely. Um... Thank you, everybody, and nice to be back in the Regenerati community. Um, the road to one dollar, I think, is just a. It, uh, I think we're all on this journey for a long time, and we're making sense of um, the current state. I think that's really what Max and I were talking about earlier. Is number one is a place where a lot of us can ask questions and. Uh, developing a strong understanding of all the different components of the decentralized network. So, you know, it's just at the moment a, um, a very high level. Um, the idea is it's a task force. It's a temporary body with the objective of articulating a roadmap to a $1 token price. It's currently at five cents. Um, so it involves, you know, writing a very succinct brief 
establishing the understanding of the current state and then making recommendations for high priority projects and requests to the different stakeholders to rally around the same. So it might be token holders, it might be requests to project developers, investors, validators, the foundation R&D, or uh, gaps where we, we really feel like a new uh, group of entities should emerge. And so, again, it's, it's sense making, it's kind of taking stock. There's a lot of moving parts, but trying to think about it from, you know, if the token price is a uh, signal to the, the market of the value of the network, we want to understand uh, where we are and then, uh, you know, make recommendations uh, sort of a, it's, it's both, it's a, in a more of a strategic roadmap to what are the big, you know, buckets to get to, uh, to $1. So that's, that's what, uh, that's what it is. And, you know, I would say we welcome anybody's ideas and contributions in an additive way. And uh, I will, uh, I'm, I'm just going to kind of lean in with a, a sprint to kind of do it as quickly as we can. But without, you know, making recommendations, we want to make sure we understand the current state. So that's kind of, I hope that's uh, helpful and that uh, we can share that, um, you know, please share your ideas with me via uh, DM and I'll, I'll get them in there and we'll start to uh, get this moving. Wonderful. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate your leaning in as a community member to help uh, shepherd that conversation along with Max and the tokenomics working group. Uh, very helpful. Uh, if unless there's any final questions for Max, uh, I'd like to uh, give him the ability to get some shut eye. Thank you, Max, for joining us and your continued work here. Really appreciate uh, you leaning in. So, um, uh, so moving on. Um, so one of the areas, you know, and, and again, I'm I, actually I'm going to look at Minskin right now as we're chatting. Um, uh, we are moving into uh, the ability uh, with our already established outstanding regen registry and the ability, I think as of this morning or tomorrow, uh, and you know, very shortly to be able to um, uh, develop um, permissionless credits or open crediting as we're calling it, uh, utilizing uh, the regen software stack. Um, and, you know, Brian Weinberg, who was just speaking about the tokenomics uh, side of things, um, you know, has been a long time regen community member has, uh, is also uh, an important bioregional community member uh, in the Kansas City area. And uh, Brian, I want to just open it up for you to um, to share more about uh, the kind of the intersection of your vision for bioregional ecological health uh, uh, and how the region, um, how re region ledger and region registry and um, this ability uh for somebody a, a community member uh, an ecological advocate you know a, um you know a community yeah a community member to step in and be able to spin up and be uh, approach bioregional eco crediting could you uh, maybe t you know take us through that story a little bit and um you know help inspire uh you know what is possible and also feel free to pepper uh, all of us with questions about you know the practical uh aspects of making this happen Absolutely. Um, so uh, thank you for this opportunity. We are uh, we were just um, we were just um, sort of invited into the CS DAO cohort too. So we're excited to work with Austin and you know getting deeper into the the Regen um, uh, community to you know incubate this and expand. But I'll I'll give you the the dream and the vision and all the questions we have. And you know we certainly love. Uh, all the smart people on this call to lean in and help uh, think this through. But there is a really, really big idea here, and it's a major opportunity, I think, for the Regen Network. Um, so going back to, uh, to what we're doing, you know, the big idea is uh, how I, I originally came, uh, I'm, 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 uh, regeneration is place-based. So starting with place, I, I moved to Kansas City four years ago to really understand what are the bottlenecks to climate action? Um, and uh, we have a climate action plan here. And what it essentially is, is an unfunded liability. It's a list, a laundry list of all the good things that we need to do uh, in order to pay for climate action. And so I, uh, they, you know, the, the city council passed it. And, but, but I started to ask the question, well, how do we actually implement it? And actually there was a, 
a review, a global review, a critical review of climate action plans in cities. And it said that the number one weakness of climate action plans is funding, financing, and MRV. So, and that's exactly what that we found when we were thinking about these questions. Like the big questions is how do we pay for it? How do we coordinate multiple workforces across entities? How do we measure it and report and verify claims in a way that builds trust? And um, how do we integrate that with the ongoing progress updates by local authorities? And what type of human culture is required of us to do that? Because right now what I'm seeing is nonprofits competing against each other that should be coordinating together. And so the best, the best mechanism in the world to do what we're trying to do is a marketplace. Every single thing that I have on my body or in my house has been purchased as a good or a service uh, and, uh, through the marketplace, the self-organizing invisible hand of the marketplace. And so Regen Network is enabling that. And I see that, uh, so, so think about it uh, big picture as the climate action plan in Kansas City, let's say it all adds up to a billion dollars. Uh, they have a cost to implement that. And each one of them pro rata sort of can be, you can do the math to see what GHG uh, or, I would say vulnerability uh, reductions you can make in that city, right? So what we're trying to say is that, let's say the total credit bank of climate action credits is a billion dollars. And the starting from the top, there's buy-in from the region. Uh, right now I'm, I'm, I'm recommending that we start at a metro area level. Um, so anybody who's in Kansas City who's claiming to do climate action they're buying into as an individual, as a business or a government into the system, which uh, which, you know, allows a whole economy to emerge gig economy, you know, um, staking of land. Uh, uh, and so that's kind of the big idea. And I'm trying, you know, obviously it's it's new and uh, we're we have a lot of uh, we've written a white paper. I would love for. Um, folks to comment on that. And we've also posted in Hilo um, and with a bunch of questions. Uh, questions like, um, what, how can we push the market agreement to a transact? So right now people wanna buy tons of carbon, but carbon tunnel vision is not climate action uh, necessarily. And in fact, there's not a lot of carbon in cities. What you, when you wanna go for carbon, you have to go for large homogenous land outside of the city. So it pushes you outside the city, whereas all the people are in the city and they're, uh, they're creating all these emissions. And so um, I think the, the idea of a climate action credit is holistic and every single city in the world could have their own economy. I mean, if we're talking about a billion dollars, that could be a, a huge opportunity for Regen. If we can just get our toe in the door with one city or one country that wants to take it on. And I think that doing the math and uh, at, that, that's one of the other questions that I put in Hilo, which is, um, let's say we don't, we, that, that whole process of getting the city or the country to endorse it, like um, how do we create, you know, we were talking to Max earlier about UNDP or other institutions that could say, this is a good idea. Um, and so how do we kind of, I haven't yet, I presented to certain um, councils, but you know, I'm, I'm a little bit gun shy because I, it, there's a lot of education and it's, you know, it's new and uh, it would take, you know, someone really embracing a new idea. And so that's uh, another one of the questions I have. Um, the other, we, we do, I think with this new resolution or proposal, we can quickly get this onto Regen um and so uh, I'm, I'm looking for support or ideas of like okay like let's um let's put this on regen and as a as a class in a city and um and start um start making transactions now everything i've talked about right now is the demand uh, the the supply side right now there's no supply of carbon credits in kansas city we're doing the first one we're doing a carbon credit which is not what i want to do but it's what i think I can sell right now. So we have to change the agreement to transact from carbon to holistic climate action, uh, which is tied to the climate action plan. 
Um, the demand side is a whole nother element, which is the buyers. And so uh, we, we've been experimenting with this and uh, we developed a concept called carbon positive KC. And uh, we have 50 customers. So 50 people, we've given them a free carbon inventory. We've showed them, you know, we asked them what's their electricity, you know, how many times they fly. We actually calculate their carbon footprint, giving a Berkeley tool. And we, we kind of reflect back to them how many trees they would have to plant and how much it would cost for them to offset and go a little bit more positive. And they, uh, 50 people are our customers where they pay monthly uh, anywhere between $20 and $100. And we, what we do is we buy a portfolio mix of uh, credits. Some are, you know, $50, you know, the, the best city forest credits you can find. And some are, uh, you know, more international, very large uh, projects that, that we find. And we're doing a lot of those transactions and buying through Regen Network. And so our goal is that these people are eventually, we can continue to expand, uh, you know, to from 50 people to 500 people. And, uh, and this is infinitely recable, recable in each city. We have our first business signing up, so it's not just individual households. Um, and, uh, and we're turning around and buying carbon credits. Now we wanna move that eventually to the climate action credits, but we're, not, we're basically not letting perfect get in the way of progress. And so we're educating people and people don't really get it. We just say that we're a group of citizens that wanna take personal responsibility for climate action. We feel eco-anxiety more than we ever had before and here's something tangible we can do because we can't all just go out and buy a new electric car or you know, a $5,000 heat pump. Uh, this is something you can do now, offset today, and then over time we can educate and, and give opportunities to, for improvement. So I'll stop there. That's like the highest level of the the supply and demand of local climate action. We have a whole paper where we talk about a lot of things. Um, uh, and uh, one thing I'm very excited about, I just add this one last piece. I think the carbon markets are, I call it an emerging market. Uh, it's uh, it's gonna change a lot and we're really early. And uh, I don't wanna, uh, I think people throw the baby out with the bathwater and they don't realize the power of a marketplace and what it's already done for society and what it can do in this scenario. Um, we need the data. And so I'm very interested in um, this. There's a leapfrog moment in technology that's happening right now where we, we move from like a 50 page document um, verified by some PhD attesting and notarized that it's true to a internet of things of sensors, low cost sensors of in the ground, in the water, in the air that are um, providing real time, all the time data, which helps to really strengthen the biggest weakness that I see, which is the trust element. So if you've got a video feed of your project that's in your own city that you can go kick the tires on if, you, if you're kind of worried about transparency, it's sort of a game changer uh, with that type of technology stack alongside it. So. I would love, love, love uh, more people to lean in. We're a little bit lonely over here trying to, uh, with a small team and, and uh, thank you for the opportunity and looking forward to the discussion. Brian, thank you so much. So exciting. Um, yeah, I've, I have so many questions, but I, I'd love to open it up um, to any questions or comments. I see some bioregional regenerators out there in the audience, happy to bring you up on stage. But I think this is a, a really good example of a community member stepping forward and starting to, with a practical application of um, utilizing regen network uh, technology and the community. So uh, uh, Austin, I see you uh, came off mute, please. Yeah, totally. Um, pleasure to be here. Nice to see you all um, on this Thursday afternoon. Yeah. and. Honestly, every time I hear Brian break down the premise, I get more excited about this project in specific, but also the kind of paradigm that it invites for us to think about in terms of what are incentive models and financing schemes for regeneration. And I think um, part of what uh, I want to point at is that like so much of our notion of climate finance is around 
you know, like the language is around offsets and around different corporate actors or different like national actors trying to hit net neutrality uh, targets. And so they're shopping around for some kind of credit that can chip away at the block for their sustainability goals. Um, and that in this context, it's, it's removing this complete schism between the supply and the demand that in theory, they are, again, like bioregionally situated in context and that like we can understand the crediting schemas within the larger commitments within a within a city around a city's identity and around people who celebrate and take pride in where they're from um and the notion of like insetting that it is one like loop and that that insetting loop is not just like an industry supply chain exclusive type of conversation but can happen within the scale of one metropolitan area so that it's not like some rural hinterland and then metropolitan area trying to like meet at some marketplace but it's all in house um so this kind of crediting in context i think is extremely cool and uh the way you phrase like people can go out and kick the tires on a project um being like incredibly impactful and i think we should stop thinking as much about credits as something that just gets brought to market and then it's kind of like jumps off a cliff hoping there's demand, but that it's like generated and responding to commitments in a context like a city in particular. So I'm curious if you have a sense, like how would you like to structure a wave of uh, credits in Kansas City, Brian? Like how would you, how would you wanna organize that? Like what's the, I know like kind of boots on the ground because that's where you're at. I'm curious as you want to transition into like a, a Kansas City native carbon credit, like what does that look like in terms of the landscape of KC? Where, like how far are people having to go to get to the place? Are they volunteers? All those sorts of things become really interesting. So I'm curious if you can kind of give some specificity there. And uh, full disclosure, I'm also from Kansas City. So I'm just like stoked that this is happening in like a, you know, former, former industrial city, tertiary, not not huge, but like indicative of many other kinds of cities in the States. So I know Brian, take that where you want, but give us a little expressive. That's why we chose the, the city is because it's, it's sort of a proxy for a tier three city. Like that's trying to do the best it can. That, exactly. So by doing it here, we're sort of learning a little bit about the whole cluster uh, of, um, of, the, the, the shenanigans of like, why is the progress not really happening despite all these people trying? Anyways, um, I think what we need to, I, one, my thing is how do I get the powers that be to just like fully embrace this from the top down? Like they would a normal tax credit. Um, that's happening all day long. And I feel like if we get the leadership of the city council and that that's very squirrely and very political and, you know, it's like a, there's a special breed of cat to wrangle um, in order to make that happen. But what it would allow is a signal to the marketplace uh, that says, if you're, if you're doing uh, climate action in our city, you're going through this mechanism, which basically um, gives everyone that cover. It gives everyone cover that they're, you know, uh, in terms of credibility and also that this is, like kind of where we go as a one-stop shop and what it, um, so I'm trying to figure out what's the, what's the right way to show up, uh, to have those conversations and presentations and what sort of like institutions should I get to like come with me that say this is like a good idea because, um, and, we, and I did speak to the city council, um, I don't know, the, uh, the environmental advisory group of the, um, I'm giving people pieces. Uh, I, I talked to them, most of them about the buying the credits and their own households and things like that. But the whole shebang, I think, uh, there's a major educational issue and um, I would love advice or ideas on, on how to do that. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna go for it. Um, and, but I don't want it to live and die in Kansas City. I hope if there's another city that that uh, is more progressive or, you know, willing to take risk, you know, like that's also an option that we can support that too. In terms of like the real, we, ha we do have a, uh, like our first uh, project is a 80 acres. Well, no, 
it's we just uh, <laughs> the uh, it's at least twenty five acres of fruit and nut trees um, and um, native grasses and uh, basically um, you know big picture you know that project is fairly straightforward it already looks like a carbon credit it's not necessarily that unique like for example like a heat reduction credit. As, a, as part of the climate action outcome, we call it a climate action credit, not a heat reduction credit. It kind of creates this like, instead of having all these different types of credits, it's like one credit, but it means all the credits, if that makes sense. All the credits that sum up to climate action is just easy for people to understand. Um, but um, what, in terms of like the brass tacks of implementation, we're, um, I think we need, a, we, need, um, we need to do the math take the climate action plan and actually do the math on the cost basis of implementing like services rendered for the whole climate action plan and get to that billion dollar number and assign the GHG and then like get that approved, get that credit bank approved uh, by the powers that be. That's, that would be the most top down way to do it. But then there's the other cowboy way of doing it, which is just going for it. And I haven't, it's a little bit fuzzier uh, for me on how to do that. And, um, so that's kind of, but what I love about it is that like my nonprofits, not if a, a bank were to be, uh, cre uh, originated in a city, you know, right now we all kind of feel that weird tension of like, you know, uh, two nonprofits are doing similar things, kind of competing against each other for these grants. It's like, Black Friday at Walmart, you know, they're just, we're just pushing each other over for, you know, trying to do good. And that's not the vibe of regeneration. And so in this particular scenario, everybody is a project developer and you're, uh, and in, you're planting a tree that has the same outcome as my planting a tree. And it's, uh, it's really just like a normal marketplace on the shelf rather than like, um, sort of just all the weird politics that uh, that is happening uh, at the moment. So I feel like it has a lot of advantages and that's my uh, roundabout answer. I don't know, Austin, if that answered your question or whatever, but that's kind of what I got. I, I'd like to um, uh, maybe take one more comment question. Ed's been patiently waiting. Ed, you want to share and then we're going to move over to Regen Foundation and CS down. Go ahead, Ed. Yeah, what the Regen Ag movement's doing to focus on cities is to look at insets, look at the businesses. Um, we have a couple of new MRV certifications. We have Regen Verified, which is a very simple, but very um, effective and quality soil test that can be done even on small farms that go to farmers markets in cities. We've also got them so they can work with the bigger companies. We have Regenified that's, um, approved by Whole Foods. Um, and so we're looking at, you know, different ways to get people in cities that are direct through the supply chains and through consumer purchasing to be able to understand a little bit about climate and what Regen is about and how we can, um, how they can support it in a more direct way um, through how they shop, you know, the supply chains, really getting businesses um, to look at something that is directly related to their work, um, which, you know, the offsets work for some businesses, but for businesses uh, that are uh, connected to like agriculture, it makes sense for them to do more of an inset look and right down to the consumer level and educating the consumer. So that's what we've been looking at to support cities. Wonderful, Ed. Uh, go ahead, Austin. I was just going to say that, Ed, Brian, if y'all haven't gotten on a call to talk to each other, I feel like there's a lot of boots on the ground experience and understanding of working in adjacent contexts. Uh, so just to like make that connection, y'all should catch up and happy to play uh, mediator there. Um, also, just chime in yeah. that... Um, in setting eco the, the exploration for the use of eco credits as um, in setting tools 
is um, is happening on a number of different fronts and was part of the original design intention, right? Because you can choose to auto retire and use them more of a certification tool instead of having them matured into an open market. Or, you know, I think the, the possibility is to use them just as internal accounting tools, which is essentially what an insetting is. So it's not maturing into an open market. So I, and heated agreement that insetting is, a really important part of the value flow system. And I think there's some pretty pretty easy ways to kind of use the existing transparency apparatus that we've built to, to facilitate, you know, through a through a stream of suppliers, sort of these insetting claims in a way that's orders of magnitude more efficient than than most of the um, alternatives out there. So looking forward to See, seeing what you guys cook up um, and excited for the next phase of the conversation here. I, I hear we're going to get to have another uh, deep dive around amazing uh, local regeneration activities. Is that right, Dave? Uh, well, I think we're next, we're going to jump in with uh, Austin and, you know, some big announcements, by the way, that a really fantastic newsletter from Regen Foundation just came out today. I will post it. Uh, on region uh, communication channels, uh, region network communication channels. So look out for that. But Austin, there's been so much movement over in the foundation. It, it feels like the foundation is ending the year so strong. Um, so kudos to your entire team. Uh, maybe you could bring us up to date as uh, Brian kind of um, dipped into uh, a new co a co cohort has been formed. Um, who are they? What does it look like? And what are the next steps? Totally. Um... Yeah, Gregory, short answer to your prompt is yes, we're going to get into it in another instance. Um, just as we sort of get a little time, Dave, can you invite uh, Victor and Chata Fish Ah to speak? Um, and uh, I'll pass the mic over to these guys in a second, but I'll give a little context. Yeah, I feel like the end of the year is a frenetic and intense time and also super exciting time. Um, uh, we'll be posting on the foundation Twitter handle later today or just basically right after this call, maybe during it, we'll see um, the, so that the public can look at uh, the first part of a four part series of an end of the year newsletter we wrote. Um, they're seasonally themed, like not because the topic has to be seasonal, but there's four of them. So we decided to, to sort of look at, look at the evolution of region foundation as a pivotal nonprofit in the larger regenerative economic space and the nonprofit arm of region network from four different vantages, basically looking at like many different kinds of mediums through which we're trying to explore this idea and support a foundational level of integrity towards the regeneration movement in, in general and more specifically at region network. Um, yeah. So, uh, the series we're excited about. The first one is on a number of different pieces and conversations like thought leadership and writing and essays that uh, the team and myself have been circulating and putting out to try to cut through a lot of noise and keep the signal high. We have a fundamental commitment to keep high integrity, high, high content, high quality content because it's a noisy space. Um, and so, yeah, we're really excited about that. We're going to release a new one every week until uh, the end of the year. And this is what we decided was probably the most um, thorough and generous of other people's attention way to like debrief the community on what's turned out to be just an enormous like number of things. So yeah, check it out. We'll have it on the, well, on the Twitter handle and, and I think um, it'll come up on the main region network one too, which would be awesome. Um, so, uh, I invited a group up to uh, to come jam with us today, and it's not by accident um, that they're coming on the heels of Brian's um, dialogue. They're second, but definitely not uh, in terms of importance. These guys are awesome. This is Chata Fish Ah, um, and we're I don't see um, Shyla here, but she was here previously. Um, is a is a member of the community too. Um, so I'll give a little context for the CS DAO, and then what I'd like to do is spend some time introducing Chata Fisha and what their approach is uh, to developing eco-credits derived but improved upon a Vera methodology that's also in an urban context that also very much deals with like 
uh, urban citizen participation as what's driving the impact. Um, and so the theme, broadly speaking, for at least these two kind of dialogues on Regenerati News Hour is around like doing it in cities, doing it in the messy, complex, insetting space. And yeah, I totally agree with Gregory's um, comments around the vision of insetting being just integral to region and thumb, double thumbs up to that. Briefly, we have launched the second cohort of the community staking DAO. We've really focused on different buyer regions trying to develop different credit types and credit classes that are prototypical that could be developed and picked up by other communities in a kind of modular fashion so that we are populating the space of novel eco credit types fast and doing it in community, like doing it um, with a group of people who are doing it together so that uh, the sort of organizational and coordination, coordination overhead uh, is minimized. And so that's really the driving theme of the second cohort, origination and the development of novel eco-credit methodologies. And that also uh, reflects the, the role the foundation wants to play and is playing increasingly and really being kind of like the top of the funnel in supporting people who want to make the step to want to take the step into developing credit methodologies, but then where do you even start? Um, there's a lot that we can support in that process as region network more broadly becomes the go-to place for innovative high integrity eco-credit design and definition. Um, so I invited uh, Chata Fisher up and um, they have like uh, an urban plastic and waste picking methodology that they're working on. And it's part of a larger ecosystem of work that's happening in East Africa, more broadly in Tanzania and in Kenya, where these guys are based. So that is a, a cool reflection of the refi movement and the region network growth that's happening in East Africa. Um, so not Kansas City, another part of the world, but similar questions and challenges. And so, yeah, um, Victor et, et al., um, I wonder if you all just want to like introduce yourselves for a second and then... Uh, give us like the sort of high level, what's the intention with what Chata Fisher is trying to do in terms of e eco-credit design and like where you're coming from, what are you reacting to? Uh, thank you so much, Austin. Um, can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah, uh, we can hear you. Amazing, amazing. Uh, I'm Victor Mwagachi from Tanzania, Dar es Salaam. I'm currently in, in Zanzibar at the moment, uh, but um, yeah, I'm really excited to be here, um, and uh, I'm from Chattafisha. I heard a lot of great things from Brian. Thank you so much for sharing, and you kind of helped me. I'm excited about even speaking about what we're doing because we're kind of like um, exploring the same themes, even though we're in different parts of the world. Um, what we're doing at Chattafisha um, is trying to create um, a sustainable way to track offsets uh, from climate impact in a way we can create a regenerative economy in the communities that we live in and in the Ghana scheme uh, in Africa per se because we're in Tanzania and we're really builders, you know, because we're seeing a lot of people in the space right now. We're in a time where we can use technology in a whole different way that does not only incentivize people from the ground up, but all the way to a way that it creates a sustainable impact in everyday life, you know. So that's kind of like what drives us with why we create each other fisher. And it's been amazing meeting Shaila and connecting us to the uh, region network and being part of the cohort and helping us shape this methodology and build, meeting people who are building the same things we're building from different parts of the world is quite inspiring. Uh, so just to get right into it, with Chata Fisher, we're trying to create, uh, I like what Brian said, it's like we need a marketplace, you know. Um, we're trying to create a way to verify uh, offset done by from all the way from waste pickers to a large scale. We're using plastic at the moment to verify like an amount of waste taken from the environment and the impact it has uh, in terms of regeneration and how we can use this to unlock carbon credits and incentivize the real stakeholders, uh, especially pickers. You know, like with an open credit uh, mechanism or methodology, if we can put it like that, you know, um, we are in a time where the impact done on the ground to to the environment is so evident, especially from where we are, the people actually doing the work, if we incentivize them and actually create um, a way to sustainably show 
the impact they do on a day-to-day life and incentivize it, we could see a ripple effect that can actually not only change the entire planet, but also see allocation of resources in ways that actually meet the needs that not only impact the people in the community, but the environment and nature itself, you know? So at the core, what Chad Fisher is, we're building a, pla- a platform or mar- a marketplace that allows uh, waste pickers to verify any offset they've done uh, from plastic waste all the way to any other type of waste. But we, in order for us to focus and build a methodology that could, we can see results in, we're focusing on plastic waste in ways that we can upcycle it and create and show this impact that we've done, you know? Uh, and this came about being in the coastal city of Dar es Salaam. That's where we're from. And you can walk for like kilometers around this area in Dar es Salaam and you find a lot of plastic waste that is not um, picked in a lot of ways. And there's a lot of reasons that goes into it. The more we keep digging up and doing research is the type of plastic matters, you know. Um, the, um, the waste pickers themselves, the value, the incentive, the market itself. So it got us thinking, how can we create something that not only tracks this impact done on a day-to-day basis, but also in the same way, we not only incentivize and unlock this mechanism, but it's sustainable, that people can find a living in doing something positive to the environment, but in a way that we also impact the environment, but at the same time, we're creating a sustainable way to see growth in these communities. So we started a pilot. We actually just offset it 1,000 kilograms uh, two weeks ago, and we are in the process of turning them into eco products. So the whole idea behind it is we're using carbon credits to begin with. Um, if we create a marketplace where we can put proposals forth from a waste picker and track the data or the amount of waste offset by person in kilograms for, for us with plastic, now track this journey from the point it's collected all the way to when it's upcycled. And we can use blockchain technology to kind of like transparently track this data and incentivize um, all the way from pickers to different sub-communities. I, I'm trying to, I, I wish I could show you the picture or show you how a lot of these things already work on ground. So I feel like what we have right now is an opportunity to not, um, just not only change, but innovate what's already happening on ground. So, for example, what we find is, is pickers who pick plastic every day, and it's the most lowly job um, in in Tanzania. You know, uh, you're looked upon as someone who's like a a low grade citizen. But in reality, this guy on a day to day basis is picking up 50 kilograms to 100 kilograms of plastic a day. That would end up in the sea or would end up in the environment. You know, so imagine if we could verify that. Uh, for example, Victor Mwagachi today, I picked up 50 kilograms of plastic. Or Yuma Ramadani picked up 50 kilograms of plastic. And they sold it to a, uh, a recycling center. And then this recycling center upcycled it. So this entire infrastructure, this journey, is what we're trying to do with Chatter Fisher. Build it as a, in our platform and create a marketplace that can be verified for the amount of offset done by West speakers on a day-to-day basis. And then unlock credits. And then... In a bigger scheme, we can lock so many other opportunities in terms of like reputation uh, tokens that these guys can get from the impact they do on a day-to-day basis, uh, and this can impact their not only their day-to-day life but their their living standard, their universal basic income on a day-to-day basis. Um, I will invite David from Chatter Fisher, my friend, my co-founder on this, and and Simalika as well, if they want to also add stuff to. Uh, what I'm saying, and really get you guys to see the ecosystem from where we are, from where we are, you know. Um, but the most important thing we want to unlock is this data of offset tracks and the potential of what you can like open up um, to different like uh, people want to offset or impact environment. Uh, Brian said we can't all buy Teslas, you know. We can't all impact environment like that, but we can support uh, a West speaker picking 50 kilograms a day, you know and then use that as a way to impact the environment and then take it to a scale up, you know. We want to also, we opened a portal for projects that want to do like uh, bigger offset schemes, right? So we, we have NGOs in Tanzania that do like um, beach cleanups in certain areas and they would in a day pick up to a ton to two tons of plastic in one area. So imagine if they could 
track this systematically and people could fund these initiatives and then we can track them by milestones and see the impact done and we have third party verifiers you know so we're trying to mold the methodology according to the various standards so we can unlock these credits but not only that go to a point where now we're introducing and onboarding people to the web3 space and they can have tokens they can now stake in this uh, initiatives that are done you know so it becomes um not only something that's just sustainable, but it's something that grows uh, by utilizing real day use cases and how they work in um, the Web3 infrastructure, which is still fairly new in, in our place in, in Tanzania at the moment. So we, um, we're t we need a lot of things to kind of like work together. Uh, for example, we're working with the NEMC here, it's a national environmental body here. We're trying to get them to be our verifiers as well. To, see like hey there's a need for something like this um for these speakers but also for this entire infrastructure to be looked upon in a different light you know that unlocks these credits um so how how we are approaching it we have tiered it into individuals can contribute and participate in um, community development but also sustainability for these west speakers directly by impacting them but also like organizations and ngos you know so um, we are trying to target CSR departments and all these other initiatives to kind of see if they can offset with our platform. I'm going to let my friend David also speak some more from Chad Fisher. Um, so you can, you can come in and chime in anytime. But ideally, this ecosystem is what we think will not only push um, for a regenerative future, but also set the planting seeds for it to kind of flourish in the long run, you know? Yeah, um, thanks a lot, Victor. I think you pretty yeah, much... Yeah, go on, David. Stuff. Yeah, um, hi, everyone. Uh, David here speaking. Um, Chata Fish as well, and we also help uh, pretty much lead WeFi Tanzania. I see uh, I see a hand raised. Victor, I'm not sure. Maybe if you could, like, mute yourself, maybe. I don't know. Hey, Victor. Uh, yeah, sometimes Twitter is a little buggy, but uh, David speaking. Okay. David speaking, and if you can mute yourself, perfect. Awesome. Hey, David. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Um, yeah, so uh, I just wanted to maybe just touch more on um, how uh, our methodology we're building on actually came about. Um, so unfortunately, um, we had a chat with um, a couple guys in the space that's also working on like plastic solutions. But uh, from all that we heard was the fact that there was no working methodology for guys that's actually doing the work on the ground. Um, and instead, the methodology actually favors these large recyclers that unfortunately end up exploiting the guys that's actually doing the work. You know, so um, we started building on that. And uh, I think we did plenty of research and we've seen, I think it was Vera that did a pilot in Thailand. And I think they did around five tons there and they upcycled it into eco products as well. So we started basically mirroring our methodology around something around that until we get to a point where we can have a proper working methodology because we have also had a chat with a couple guys for vera and unfortunately the methodologies and the auditing and having the verification bodies and everything was just super costly and um it's it's not really feasible for someone who's actually working on the ground who's in let's say east africa like tanzania or kenya you know so we started building around that and uh, we based our methodologies around these way speakers who like victor said they offset around 50 to 100 kilograms a day but unfortunately earn 10 cents per kilogram so you can imagine they earn 10 cents but you have um uh, other initiatives let's say in europe and in america who would get up to a dollar for for the same work if not less than the work that they do you know so we started building on that and like victor said we built a dap that basically enables uh, these way speakers to log in the daily verified offset information as well as a uh, uh, portal to basically streamline verified green projects. Um, but again, we also built uh, a carbon-backed NFT marketplace, which we are soon to, to release. But basically, it's um, a platform that enables people to uh, upload pictures of the uh, proof of, of impact and... Um, they get minted an uh, NFT, which is basically like a proof of uh, impact and a carbon back certificate that has the metadata of the name 
of the offsets. So let's say if it's the pickers, the location, the type of waste, as well as the amount. And uh, people can also trade these NFTs and uh, exchange them and gain rarity, pretty much like Avigotio, or like CryptoKitties. I'm not sure if you guys uh, have seen it around. So we basically try to like gamify the whole whole process. And um, yeah, that's pretty much what we're building. And uh, super excited, super stoked to actually met Shyla and met Regen, Austin and Will and all the great guys at the foundation who's basically helping us uh, build this methodology because we know it's not like the proper best working methodology, but like for us to like meet people all over the world and like exchange ideas and build on working methodologies that can potentially impact like not just East Africa and Tanzania and Kenya, but like the whole of Africa and the global south overall is pretty pretty ecstatic for for us so so yeah i think um that's pretty much it from from our side uh super excited for for this regenerating hour it's our first time here and hopefully we can jam some more and uh get to meet everyone else here thanks thanks guys that's awesome um personally i've been working through some pretty intense climate anxiety and it's awesome to just take the time to hear in detail what people are doing and get excited and feel excited about that. Two things, we're basically at time, but two things that um, I think make this really powerful is one, like uh, I live in a city too um, and the redeemers, like aluminum redeeming um, is huge and as it is in basically every city in the world. And that's because of the most simple mechanic that like one can is worth some amount of money, say a nickel. And just that there's any value at all defined by that creates uh, this huge economy, um, largely informal, but more or less ubiquitous. And the scale of that, as, as Victor and David are talking about, like, is, is just enormous when, when uh, people who are looking for an honest livelihood and, 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 and a working income by not hurting but helping can see that just the most simple mechanic has been introduced. Um, and that leads to this other exciting part of this project. And I think is a really, really important like distillation of the potential for decentralized ledgers and open and transparent uh, climate financial protocols is that like if there's a way to get over the verification hump and the costliness of it that Vera maintains through smarter technology and through more accessible and transparent processes, then that is a huge unlock. And I feel like waste picking in particular is a really poignant moment where that could be shown. So uh, we're stoked to have you all on NewsHour and also stoked to have you all as part of the cohort because it's like what Brian was describing, playing through on the most elemental level the potential for the tools that we're building to have transformative impact because we're starting from zero. So any, any bump starting from zero is enormous. So yeah, that's all I've got. Stoked to be here. I'm feeling inspired. Thanks everybody. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, so great to hear from Dara Salam to Kansas city to Santa Barbara and beyond really inspiring news hour. Thank you everyone for being here. I uh, just want to give you an update real quick. We are at uh, one day left to vote on Prop 36 for open crediting. Um, we are at 100% yes, 100%. Not an abstain, not a no vote yet. So that is... Uh, wow. Is that, I mean, usually we're, we, it's high, but I feel like there's a few abstains or, or I know. no votes I'm, in there. I kind of had to double check and see. Uh, uh, cool. Anyhow, well, I, pardon me. There's a thousand region on abstention. It counts as zero percent in the uh, ah, right so, here. So somebody abstained. So, <laughs> cool. So yeah. Some, um, yeah. Hey, I just wanted to shout out. Um, you know, I've got a hop here, but I just wanted to shout out to to Antonio and Gimo and. Um, I, at some point, I want to get you all up here to share yes, yes. about. Same. Um, Refi Cecilia and the time that you all spent together and what's happening there. So, you know, maybe, uh, maybe in the, in a coming week or so week or two, we could, uh, we could jam on that and just get, get an up, another update from the ground. I'm just, I so love getting to hear the dialogue. Um, Chata Fisher, um, thank you so much. It's really exciting. Um, 
see how we can support each other around the world and just like see the community sharing solutions and building together couldn't couldn't be leaving uh more more inspired so thanks for sharing all right everybody we'll see you uh see you in a couple weeks sounds good bye everyone see ya bye bye